we are here going to focus on the problem of state assignment. This means that when we have a set of states, we need to assign them some binary representation using zeros and ones. The example that we're going to look here at here is our detector. The detector is used to detect the sequence 0011, and when it detects the sequence, then it will output a one. So the first thing that we typically do is that we write the state transition table and then we find a minimal graph. So assuming now that we have a minimal graph, what the next step is, is to now do a state assignment. So let us do the state assignment using NBCD coding of our states. That means that for Q1 and Q2, we will have the assignment 00, 0 for state S0, 0, 01 for S1, 10 for S2 and 11 for S3. Then if we update our state transition table with this state assignment, it means that we here will have 0, 01 and 0 because if we are in S0 represented as 00, 0, we go to the state S1 with a 0 input and S1 is represented as 0, 01. With a 1 as an input, we go to the state S0, 0, 0 with a zero as an output. In state S1 with a zero input, we go to the state one zero with a zero output. And then with a one as an input, we go to zero zero and a zero output. In S2 with an input of zero, we go to the S state S2, which we represented as one zero and a zero as an output. And then with a one as an input, we go to the state S3, which we now represented as one one, and we have a zero as the output. And finally, if we are in state S3 that we represented as 1, 1, if we have a 0 as an input, we go to the state that we denoted 0, 1, that is S1, and we have a 0 as an output, and with a 1 as an input, we go to the state 0, 0, which is S0, and with a 1 as an output. Now, in order to minimize our functions here, we want to write our Carnot map. And we have three Carnot maps that we need to write. One for Q1+, plus, so Q1 in the next state, one for Q2+, plus, and one for the output function that we here call U. And a good trick here is to write all these Carnot maps at the same time. And also to use Q1 and Q2 here on the rows because this means that we very easily can go from our state transition table to our Carnot maps. So in the first case here if we have 0 0 here it means that we are in the state 0 0 and with a 0 as an input it means that we have this combination here so what we will get is 0 1 0 so we fill in this at the same time. And if we have a 1 as an input instead, and we are in state 0, 0, we have 0 for Q1+, plus, 0 for Q2+, plus, and 0 for U. So this is exactly this 0, 0 here written in the state transition table. And we can also immediately fill out the next row, which is 1, 0, 0, and then we have 0, 0, 0. And in the next step, we just have to remember that the 1, 1 here that we have corresponds to the 1, 1 here. So the Carnot maps will be 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And then the 1, 0 here will correspond to the 1, 0 here. So we have 1, 0, 0, and then we have 1, 1, 0. And as you can see, this is a very efficient way of filling out our Carnot maps. The next step is to find our prime implicants, and we have one prime implicant here, and then we have one prime implicant here. For Q2+, plus, we have one prime implicant here, we have one here, and we have one here. So we cannot make any bigger rectangular boxes than this in this Carnot map. And for the output function, we only have one, one, so there is only one prime implicant. It should be quite obvious that all our primes are essentials in all our functions, so we can write our minimal functions as q1 plus equals q1 prime 
q2 x prime or q1 q2 prime and q2 plus equals q1 prime q2 prime x prime or q1 q2 x prime or q1 q2 prime x and the output function u can be written as q1 q2 x this gives us in total six implicants so if we want to realize this function we will need six AND gates and five of them have to be of three inputs and one of them of two inputs but according to our definition of minimal the number of implicants is the most important here and we have as I said six implicants now let us instead try another state assignment and in this time we're going to use gray coding instead of our states so S0 we're going to note by 0, 0 as before, S1, 0, 1, then S2 we're going to call 1, 1, and S3 we're going to call 1, 0. If we now fill out this state transition table here, we see that if we are in state 0 and we have an input 0, we go to S1, so we go to 0, 1 with a 0 as output. If we have a 1 as an input, we go to 0, 0 with a 0 as output. If we are in S1, if we have a 0 as input, we go to S2. And this we have now called 1, 1. And we have the output 0. And if we have an input 1, we go to the state S0 with the 0 output. And from S2 with a 0 as an input, we go to S2 again. So we go to 1, 1 with a 0 as output and then with a 1 as an input we go to 1 0 with a 0 as an output and for the final state S3 with a 0 as input we go to S1 which we have called 0 1 with a 0 as an output and then finally with a 1 as an input we go to S0 with a 1 as an output. And again we want to fill out the Carnot maps and as before, we write Q1 and Q2 here for the rows, and then we write X, the input, as our columns. And now, since we have gray coded our states here with S2 and S3 being 1, 1 and 1, 0 respectively, they will actually have the same order as what we have in the Carnot maps. Now, this is not the reason why we do gray coding here. The reason will be just to see that the number of implicants may differ. Uh, but we can note it when we fill out our Carnot maps because now we can just write it immediately by just basically copying our state transition table here to our Carnot maps in the following way. So basically I just take what is in the state transition table and I write it in the Carnot maps. So it's a very efficient way of doing these Carnot maps. And we make our prime implicants in the common maps as follows. So here we have two prime implicants. For Q2 plus, we have only one prime implicant, which consists of all these four ones here. And then for the output function, we have only one one. So there is a single prime implicant covering only that one. All of them are clearly essential. So now we can write our Boolean function, so Q1 plus equals q2 and x prime or q1 q2 for q2 plus we have the prime implicant that is only represented as x prime and for u we have the prime implicant q1 q2 prime x and here we see that when we use the gray coding, we now instead have in total four implicants, which is definitely smaller than the six implicants that we had for the NBCD case. 
And if we look at the Carnot maps, what we see that the main reason for this is that we here in the Carnot map for Q2 plus only had one prime implicant covering all the ones in that map. From these two examples, what we can see is that the number of implicants that we have in our realization of the graph will depend on the state assignment. So in the first case, for the NBCD state assignment, we had six implicants, and for the gray coding state assignment, then we had four implicants. The problem is that in general, there is no known methods for how to find the optimal state assignment. So instead, we have to use heuristics in order to try to find a good state assignment. But we can never know if it is optimal or not unless we try all the possible state assignments. And that we will not do. A good idea that we can use is to try to find a state assignment where very few variables change in each state transition. And if you remember from the gray coding, the whole point of gray coding is that we change as few variables as possible, namely one variable, each time we go to a new representation. However, it is important to remember that the gray coding should be in the context of the state transition graph. Just saying that, for example, S2 should be coded as 1, 1 and S3 should be coded as 1, 0, that is not enough, because we don't know how the states transition to each other. The gray coding should be such that when you transition to a new state, then we should change as few variables as possible.